Great to see you. This question actually comes from a, um, a brain trust of my friends at Global Telecom Supply in Mineola yesterday. We were sitting around talking about Libya, and we were reading and became aware of reports that the State Department refused extra security for our embassy in Benghazi, Libya, prior to the attacks that killed four Americans. Who was it that denied enhanced security, and why? Well, let me first of all talk about our diplomats, because they serve all around the world and do an incredible job in a very dangerous situation. And these aren't just representatives of the United States. They're my representatives. I send them there, oftentimes in a harm's way. I know these folks, and I know their families. So nobody is more concerned about their safety and security than I am. So as soon as we found out that the Benghazi consulate was being overrun, I was on the phone with my national security team, and I gave them three instructions. Number one, beef up our security and, say, uh, and, and procedures, not just in Libya, but in every embassy and consulate in the region. Number two, investigate exactly what happened, regardless of where the facts lead us, to make sure that folks are held accountable and it doesn't happen again. And number three, we are going to find out who did this and we are going to hunt them down. Because one of the things that I've said throughout my presidency is when folks mess with Americans, we go after them. Now, Governor Romney had a very different response. While we were still dealing with our diplomats being threatened, Governor Romney put out a press release trying to make political points. And that's not how a commander in chief operates. You don't turn national security into a political issue. Certainly not right when it's happening. And people, not everybody agrees with some of the decisions I've made. But when it comes to our national security, I mean what I say. I said I'd end the war in, Libya, uh, in, in Iraq, and I did. I said that we'd go after Al Qaeda and bin Laden. We have. I said we'd transition out of Afghanistan and start making sure that Afghans are responsible for their own security. That's what I'm doing. And when it comes to this issue, when I say that we are going to find out exactly what happened, everybody will be held accountable. And I am ultimately responsible for what's taking place there, because these are my folks, and I'm the one who has to greet those coffins when they come home. You know that I mean what I say. Mr. President, I've got to move us along. Governor. Thank you, Kerry, for your question. It's an important one. And, uh, and I, I think the President just said correctly that, that the buck does stop at his desk, and, and he takes responsibility for, for that. Uh, for the, the failure in, in providing those security resources. And, and those terrible things may, may well happen from time to time. I, I'm, I feel very deeply sympathetic for the families of those who lost, lost loved ones. And today there's a memorial service for one of those that was lost in this tragedy. We, we think of their families and care for them deeply. Uh, there were other issues associated with this, uh, with this tragedy. Um, there were many days that passed before we knew whether this was a spontaneous demonstration or actually whether it was a terrorist attack. And there was no demonstration involved. It was a terrorist attack. Um, and it took a long time for that to be told to the American people. Um, whether there was some misleading or instead whether we just didn't know what happened, I think you have to ask yourself, why didn't we know five days later uh, when the ambassador to the United Nations went on TV to say that this was a demonstration? How could we have not known? But, but I find more troubling than this, that on, on the day following the assassination of the United States Ambassador, the first time that's happened since 1979, when, uh, when we have four Americans killed there, when apparently we didn't know what happened, that the President, the day after that happened, flies to Las Vegas for a political fundraiser, then the next day to Colorado for another event, another political event. I, I think these, these actions taken by a President and a leader have symbolic significance and perhaps even uh, material significance in that you'd hope that during that time we could call in the people who were actually eyewitnesses. We've read their accounts now about what happened. It was very clear this was not a demonstration. This was an attack by terrorists. And, and this calls into question the president's whole policy in the Middle East. Look what's happening in Syria, in Egypt, now in, in Libya. Consider the distance between ourselves and, and Israel. The president said that, that he was going to put daylight between us and Israel. We have Iran 
four years closer to a nuclear bomb. Syria, Syria is not just the tragedy of 30,000 civilians being killed by a military, but also a strategic, uh, strategically significant player for America. The, the president's policies throughout the Middle East began with an apology tour and, 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 and pursue a strategy of leading from behind. And this strategy is unraveling before our very eyes. Because we're, we're closing in, I want to still get a lot of people in. I want to ask you something, Mr. President, and then have the governor just quickly. Uh, your Secretary of State, as I'm sure you know, has said uh, that she takes full responsibility for the attack on the diplomatic mission in Benghazi. Does the buck stop with your Secretary of State as far as what went on here? Secretary Clinton has done an extraordinary job, but she works for me. I'm the president, and I'm always responsible. And that's why nobody's more interested in finding out exactly what happened than I did. The day after the attack, Governor, I stood in the Rose Garden and I told the American people in the world that we are going to find out exactly what happened, that this was an act of terror, and I also said that we're going to hunt down those who committed this crime. And then a few days later, I was there greeting the caskets coming into Andrews Air Force Base and grieving with the families. And the suggestion that anybody in my team, whether the Secretary of State, our UN Ambassador, anybody on my team would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor is offensive. That's not what we do. That's not what I do as President. That's not what I do as commander in chief. Governor, if you want to reply yeah, I, just I, quickly I to this, do, please. I, do. I, I, I think it's interesting. The president just said something, which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. That's what I said. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a please spontaneous proceed. demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little louder, Candy? He, he did call it an act of terror. It did as well take, it did as well, uh, take uh, two weeks or so uh, for the whole idea of there being a riot out there about this tape to come out. You're correct this, about that. The administration, the administration indicated that this was a, a reaction to a, to a video and was a spontaneous reaction. They did. It took them a long time to say this was a terrorist act by a terrorist group. And, and to suggest, am I incorrect in that regard? On, on Sunday, the, uh, your, your secretary, your, excuse me, the uh, ambassador of the United Nations, one of the Sunday t television shows and, and spoke about how Kenny, this was a spontaneous I'm, I'm happy, to, I'm happy me, to have a longer conversation about foreign absolutely, policy. Absolutely, but I want, I want to move you on. And okay, also people can to go too. to the transcripts. I just and, want to make sure that uh, you know, all these wonderful folks are going to have a chance to get some of their questions answered.